Fancy perhaps a couple still to come through from the pre-parade ring. Uh, but we've had a good look at some of the runners for uh, Division 2, or Division 1, I should say, of the concluding handicap. Uh, so we'll pick the others out on course. OK, gotcha. So, Penelspit race, last uh, two races, a uh, split divisions of a handicap over 10 furlongs. And just looking at the betting a few moments ago, there's, what, three points separating the first five or six of them in the market. Competitive-looking affair. Tankeeb edging it at 4-1 at the moment. Corked at 5-1, who we didn't see. Derry Boys in 11-2 shot. And then you come to the likes of Courtside and Chinese Whisper, who, uh, Whisperer, I should say, who could yet be interesting. Uh, Corked is one that I didn't see in the parade ring, would have been covered up, who has, a, has been competitive in every start this year, uh, probably needed the return over much shorter than this when racing resumed. But thereafter, there's just been a model of consistency, a course and distance winner off much higher than this three years ago. But uh, looking at the marks more recently, marks in the mid-60s, there might not be loads of wiggle room but she doesn't seem to run bad races, and she's dropped a pound further from last time, and it will all help for one who doesn't seem to run a bad race and probably just continues to perform to her mark. She'll come from off the pace, which is the kind of comment that you'd apply to a few of them. And there's a few that would like to come off a, a generous pace, and I'm just intrigued to see how the pace scenario is going to play out. I wanted to mention Chinese Whisperer. It was disappointing last time at Kempton Park. It was a race that Alan King likes, and uh, Chinese Whisperer was running over hurdles that day. The jumping just wasn't good enough. But that run last time on the all-weather at Wolverhampton gave the impression that 10 furlongs would be suitable. And Chinese Whisperer is around about a six-to-one shot, which is only a point and a half uh, bigger in the market than the current favourite, Tang Keeb. Should we save it for the last race? What do you think? No? We'll have it now. OK. All right. Can you name Lester Piggott's Derby winners? Right. Uh, <laughs> OK. Nijinsky. One. Sariva. Two. Was Tino so one? Three. Oh, was it? OK. Um, hmm. Google. I think no, 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 no. I'm not. I promise you, Wikipedia. I'm not. Um, in fact, no, 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 uh, not at all. Um, I trust you. I trust you. You're a good man. Th the, the, oh, the minstrel. Correct. Yeah, there we are. I think that might be it. But uh, I tell you what. How many? I think if I go with four, I don't think I'm going to be too disappointed driving home later. No, four. You've got. He had nine. Yeah. He had nine. Yeah. Right. Mm. Uh, I tell you what. Can I have the second part ahead of the last race? Fine. If you can come, promise, I trust you, you won't Google it. So if you can come back with the, the other five before the last race, that'd be magnificent. I'll wrap them off. Bang, bang, bang. It would almost look like I've Googled it, but I promise you I won't. <laughs> Good luck with picking the winner of this one, by the way. 
I think this is quite an interesting little affair, this. I know that in the second division, we have the very well-fancied uh, Fortune Finder for Gary Moore. This one looks far more open. In fact, in that last race, if you're looking at the market now for that 7.45 race, Fortune Finder's around about a four to five shot, but you'd have only two or three points separating the first four, five, six in the market. And you have horses like the extremely consistent Corked coming here, um, who just doesn't seem to run bad races whatsoever. I'm intrigued by Chinese Whisperer, who steps up in distance, who looks a, f a fair bit exuberant going down to post in the Colours of the Barbary Lions, who've had such success, in particular with Trushan, in recent times. Um, where did you instinctively lean, George, when looking at this race? I suppose um, I really like Ian, Ian Williams gelding um, Tanky. I thought it was a very taking effort last time um, at at Lingfield, um, and that race is probably is a strong line of form. I think the fourth's come out and won um, Diaglev since, and he, for me, when you watch that race, I watched the replay again this morning. He just took a long time to level off when it went, obviously you haven't got much time when you turn in for home, and he really got rolling mm. inside the last furlong at Lingfield. And I just wonder whether the track here may well suit a bit better. And if Jim can just get him rolling in a bit more time, he'll, he'll, I think he'll be seen to better effect. You go five to one the field now. And one that I didn't even mention at the, the time, but we did have a look at, was Derry Boy. And that fifth last time at Wolverhampton wasn't bad at all. The winner, Fitwood Star, came and won here last night. The second, uh, what would you know, has run creditably at Chelmsford as well. I, I suppose the glaring fact is that despite a whole host of placed efforts, we're talking about a horse in Derry Boy who's yet to win a race of any kind on the synthetics. Yeah, he's, he's run respectably on it though, hasn't he? I just think, for me, probably to be seen winning again um, round here may well need to be just drop a couple of pounds and um, will make life a bit easier if you can get into sort of a, a, a class lower or such. Courtside is a six to one shot which is perhaps in keeping with what I jotted down this morning um, one from 16 overall probably did the best work late on at Newcastle last time in the refitted cheap pieces haven't actually worn them since the, the final start at David Simcock a couple of years ago it's quite well handicapped for a horse who hasn't won at this trip but, but does stay it, does get the trip will probably sit off a decent clip how do you, how do you see the pace going in this because I think, I think there are a few of them that are going to want to sit off a gallop rather than be on it well, um, I don't think there's much pace on paper. Um, I'm sure that the riders will be aware of that. Um, I suppose Blue Eagle could roll along maybe. Um, they're dropping down in trip. Um, and that may be a possible option for Blue Eagle. But I don't see a, a standout pace-wise in this race. Listen, in the previous race, we saw Full Intention, who absolutely loves it here, winning again over course and distance. And it's interesting to note that Baston Hill, who's got a fairly good record, say the least here, three wins a second and two-thirds from as many starts here. This is the first time the horse has been here since successive course and distance wins in September. Yeah, and he's operated very well around this sort of level, mark of 64 this evening. Um, at best, as one of, of 69, and, and, he, and he knows how to win, so he's, a, he's of interest in this race. But it's a very, I think it's a very competitive class six. And I'd, I'd, what, what, what's your feeling? What do you think of win, Nick? Well, I've backed Baston Hill, if I'm honest, um, purely on the basis that I don't think the runs at Wolverhampton have been too bad whatsoever in recent times, and hopefully the switch back to, to Chelmsford, where, as I said, I mean, it might just be the day that the horse does run badly here. He is yet to run a bad race around here. As I mentioned, three wins and, and then placed efforts from every run here. But we shall see. It's the eighth of nine. The last to go forward will be courtside. And to call them home, here's Mike. All set here. And away they go. Often racing a mile and a quarter this first division of this tote.co.uk class six handicap. They broke really well here. Coming out the centre of the track then is Baston Hill to take them along as they come up towards the judge. Just a bit short of room on the inside there, though, is uh, Derry Boy, just reined back there by Ross Orion. They're just squeezed out a bit by Chinese Whisperer as they sorted themselves out going towards that first turn. So as they settle down then, Baston Hill is the one that takes them along. On the outside, Haley Turner on Blue Eagle in the grey jacket, close up second. Chinese Whisperer is racing third with Voy in the green and yellow in fourth place. Then the striped jacket is Der Derry Boy is next to the rail, followed wider out by Secret Art. Corked is held up then just behind that little group. Then on the inside as they head down the far side is 
Dawn Treader in the cheek pieces, Tan Keeb, and finally Courtside held up at the back by Shane Gray. Pace is only a medium one, it seems, but it's being set here by Baston Hill, three-time winner here at Chelmsford City. On the outside, Blue Eagle, the filly. Racing just behind these leaders, then there's the green jacket there of Voy. On the inside, Chinese Whisperer, saving ground for Tom Queeley as they go past the half-mile marker. Just behind these leaders, Secret Art is next. And then flanking uh, him on the uh, on the inside there then is Cork to the Scottish trained mare who's just beginning to improve now. Courtside is on the move as well. Tanky being asked a few questions. Dawn Treader still last, but in touch. A lot of chances then as they turn in to the judge with two furlongs left to run. And Baston Hill has just nicked a couple of lengths of his rivals on that turn. Trying to mount a bit of a challenge now is Chinese Whisperer who moves up to dispute second with Derry Boy on the inside. Also coming there is Vaughan. Boy, but they're up past the furlong marker and Basin Hill and Danny Musket are clear by two lengths. The others are going up and down on the spot a bit here because Basin Hill's going to return to winning form and goes on to win from Cork to run on nicely for second. Back in third place was Voy just ahead of Chinese Whisperer. Well, a horse that doesn't run bad races at Chelmsford, you can add this one to the list as well. It's another win, a fourth win uh, for Baston Hill around here. Placed on every other outing, a good enterprising ride from Daniel Musket, who gets on well with the horse as well. And just had to be shaken up at the start to get a prominent position where there was no immediate rush to go on. There might have been a little bit of a kickback there to the likes of Derry Boy, who got squeezed up at the inside in the early stages. But from there on in... You could see the horse was travelling extremely strongly and kicked a couple of lengths out of them, turning for home. And that was probably the race-winning manoeuvre. We're seeing the closing stages once again. Had a good few lengths at this stage in hand and nothing else could lay a glove. Corked once again in the frame, had to be switched out, ran on pretty strongly, but the bird had flown. Yeah, it was a good ride from Dan Musket, who was obviously aware that there wasn't heaps of pace on paper. It was aggressive out the stores, as, you, as you've said. And that was the winning of the race from the start and, and got into a nice rhythm on the front end. Did get a bit of pace pressure from Blue Eagle when Haley moved up from, from, from her poor draw, but ultimately dictated the race at a smooth rhythm. And as you say, when he kicked this horse in the belly off the, off the home bend, nicked a couple of lengths out the field and just hung on. And it was a good performance by Court in second place, who, who, who made a good bit of ground late on. Just intrigued to watch the, the run back of Court Whisperer in the Barbary Lions colours, who was sent to that novice hurdle at Kempton, which Alan King does pretty well in, back in October. Didn't jump particularly well that day, but gave the impression last time that this sort of trip would be in the offing at Wolverhampton. I was intrigued to see what the horse would do and hasn't been beaten too far. I would, I would like to think that they might well keep at this sort of distance for the not too foreseeable future. Yeah, I would have thought so. Um, it wasn't a bad effort and it's just, as you say, he's running into a little bit of form and maybe a horse to follow going forward. But this weather, every time he turns up to Chelmsford, he runs his race and has won again here. Baston Hill has taken Division 1 of the concluding handicap. And well done to Nick Lightfoot, uh, who pointed us in the direction of Baston Hill before uh, and 